Welcome to Travel Devil. I'm your host, Clara Franken, and in a world full of masterism, we're here to talk about unconventional travel. Let's get into it. And today we're going to talk about train travel. I have a lot of experience with traveling by train, definitely in Europe. I traveled a lot between Belgium and Germany, Belgium and France. I even took the train from Germany to Spain and I did a whole trip from Greece until Germany. So I have a lot of experience in buying cheap tickets, in finding the right route, in finding beautiful destinations and more. So to give you a quick overview of what we're going to do today, I'm going to tell you how to choose the right route, what are some packing essentials, how to find cheap tickets, how to maximize comfort when traveling, why traveling by train is a sustainable travel option, And I'm also going to share some personal anecdotes. And then to end the episode, I received a lot of messages through Instagram. And I'm going to answer all of them as well at the end of this episode. Those are questions concerning, for example, my favorite place I have traveled to. What's the difference between Interrail and Eurorail? What food to bring along on a trip and such. So I'm going to get into those questions at the end. And first of all, let's start with the beginning. So how do you find the right route to travel by train? The question is also what is the right route, right? Because is the right thing to do to find the cheapest ticket or to have the best scenery? Those are different questions. So you have to look at what interests you the most and then you buy the ticket that is fitting to your needs. You maybe also want to take into consideration connections and train lines. Okay, so this is just like the very basis of what we're going to talk about today. I want to start actually with the question that I get asked the most, which is how to find cheap train tickets. Okay, so I'm going to give you a lot of tips on that because many people want to know how to find cheap train tickets. And I want to tell you because many people also think that traveling by plane is cheaper than traveling by train. And I'm going to debunk this because that ain't true. That ain't necessarily true. There are many, many options to find cheap train tickets. And so you don't need to hop on a plane. There are many more beautiful ways to travel, such as by train. So let's get into it. Okay. So first of all, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at the website. There are many different websites to find cheap train tickets. You could find some comparison websites such as Omeo, Trainline and such. I have used those websites and I think you can definitely look at them. I would say that for me, the most, the cheapest way to find tickets was always on the regional website. Can be annoying because sometimes a regional website is written in Italian and I don't speak Italian. But thanks to Google, we can translate the page. And sometimes the page is already translated automatically because the website is a little bit more aware of the international audience. But so basically what I would suggest you to do is to always compare different websites. So if I want to travel from, let's say, Belgium to Germany, then I will check the Belgian website. I will check the German website. I will check a comparison website. And I will type in the same route for the same day I want to travel to, the same hour. Maybe you don't always find the same tickets, which is weird, but it is the way it is. And then you compare the prices, right? So um, in my case, most of the time, I found the cheapest ticket through the German railway, Deutsche Bahn. Look at the different websites. I think it also depends from when you're buying the tickets. Let's say we're buying tickets through the regional train website from Germany. We're taking the Deutsche Bahn and we're buying the ticket very last minute. Then the price will go up crazy high. The same ticket can be 20 euros if I buy it like ahead of time. And then for some crazy reason, it's like 190 euros if you're buying it for next week. 
So you always have to buy your tickets ahead of time. That's really, really important. But then again, if you are booking last minute, it's even more important to compare different websites because for some reasons, I have had the case that Omeo or the train line have cheaper last minute tickets than the Deutsche Bahn website, than the regional train website. You always have to buy your ticket ahead of time. I'm not even sure if you have to buy it like a year ahead of time, half year ahead of time. I think that's too early and I'm not even certain that's always going to be cheaper. My personal favorite thing to do is to buy it at like one month and a half before departure because then I know the exact date and it's not too early because as I have seen it, it's going to be even more expensive if you buy it really ahead of time because then the prices are still a little bit up and then they go down, I guess, and then they go up again. I don't know the algorithm. Nobody talks about the algorithm of train tickets, but that's the way I experienced it. So I would say like two months ahead of time, one month and a half ahead of time, at least a month ahead of time is where you should buy your cheap train tickets. Then talking about the day and the time, it's not only buying ahead of time, but it's also looking at exactly what time you're going to travel. So if you want to travel um, on a weekend, it's going to be more expensive than on a weekday. So if you're flexible, you should definitely think about weekdays. Then again, you have the time of the day. So if you want to travel in early mornings and take the train at five o'clock, I promise you the train is going to be cheaper at five o'clock than if you're just taking the train at like nine in the morning, very chill. So it depends on what you want. You want a cheap ticket or you want a comfortable solution, right? So you always need to put more money um, aside for the comfortable trip and then be a little bit more flexible for the cheaper trip. Okay. Another thing you also have to take into consideration is holidays. So depending on where you're traveling to, which country you are at the moment, you check the holidays, the national holidays of that country. And on those days, the tickets are going to be up as well. Or for example, if there's some big festivities. For example, I live in Germany. There is Oktoberfest, um, which is the beer fest. And if you want to travel in that period by train, the prices are just going to be higher. They're just going to be up. It is the way it is. Then there's no way around it. You just need to buy your ticket ahead of time and hope you still get a good deal, right? But then there's nothing to do about it if you want to travel during those holidays, party days, whatever you call them. So always make sure you check that as well. If you are flexible with the time and you don't need to go during that period, go after or go before. Another thing which's going to happen is when you buy cheaper tickets that you probably have more connections. On the train apps or on the websites, you will see like five times changing the train. Like, I would not suggest you to do that. Definitely not in Germany with all the delay we have. Like, that sounds a terrible decision because, yeah, if you're willing to take the risk, go for it because it's going to be way cheaper. But I would also always suggest you to have at least 15 minutes between every change of train. When you have a lot of connections because of the cheaper ticket, then maybe put your settings to 15 minutes between every connection just to make sure that you have the time to catch every connection, even if your train has a delay. But I promise you, if you have five connections to catch, you will have one delay at least. That's going to make sure that you miss all the other connections. But the good thing is that probably you can take any other train to get to your destination as soon as you missed your connection because it's the mistake of the train company and not your mistake. Okay, let's continue. So we were talking about the train connections. Another thing, a little, little trick you can try is if you see that the train is very expensive with the connection you want to travel to, you might want to split up the connection. So buy one ticket from A to B and then maybe look even on another website or on the same website from B to C. And the combination of both could be cheaper. So you have to look into that as well. I personally have tried this 
and I've only did this split once because it was cheaper. If you want to take the time to check that out, it can definitely be interesting for you as well. We're not finished with the tricks to find cheap tickets just yet. Another thing you should, well, you cannot really influence it, but if you're a student or if you have a certain age, you're under a certain age, you can get a discount. So always make sure that in the settings or when you're even buying your ticket in the train station, then you take your student card with you or your identity card to at least show your age. Maybe you're a senior or maybe you're a junior, stuff like that. There will always be discounts. And then talking about discounts, you can also always look for deals. Deals are a bit tricky to find. You won't be able to be like Googling for a deal just right now when you're wanting to buy your cheap ticket. But what you can do, you can subscribe to a newsletter of the railway company you're using the most or multiple railway companies and they will probably send you discount codes because they want you to stay a client, right? So what you can always do is to subscribe to that newsletter, to receive those spam emails, to delete them when you don't need it, but then sometimes you get a discount code and you can use it. And most of the time you have to use it within a certain time period, but at least you have a discount code. And if you're very flexible, this can be your time to do that trip you always wanted to do because you got a five euros discount or a 10 euros or a percentage, whatever. And then there are also loyalty programs. Loyalty programs are programs where you gather a certain amount of points when you're traveling by train with a certain railway company. For example, I travel a lot with the Deutsche Bahn, as I said, and for each trip I take, I get points. At the end of the year, I have maybe 1,000 points, let's say. And with my 1,000 points, I can get a free ticket through Germany. Or I can already take out a couple of points earlier and I will have a 5 euros discount coupon for those amount of points you have. So depending on what you want to spend them on, you can always get discount codes or free tickets and such with these loyalty programs. So check that as well. If you use one railway company quite often, you must subscribe to their newsletter and you must subscribe to their loyalty program. Then the last thing I want to say about finding cheap tickets, sometimes it's just too late. Your last minute traveling and the ticket is crazy high, okay? Then probably or maybe you could use an interrail ticket. Interrail ticket or another rail pass is a ticket you can use all over Europe. It's one price. It's by the company called Interrail. Um, and you can use this one ticket to travel, for example, through for four days within one month. You leave your country and you come back. I think the least amount of days you can travel in one month, the cheapest ticket um, on their website, will be three days. Three days traveling, four, I will check it. Okay, so I just checked the price for interrail tickets and the prices went up. So, okay, also for interrail, you can also look at some discount times, right? But I can make a different episode about interrail tickets in general. Let's say you want to travel to another country tomorrow because you need to go there. And then you always need to come back. And the last minute ticket is going to be super expensive. So it's going to be like 190 euros just one way, maybe. Then you might still want to consider an interrail ticket because the cheapest interrail ticket is 212 euros currently for youth. And then for adults, it is 283 euros. So depending on your journey, it's going to be cheaper. But I must say that interrail they put their prices higher. They, they put their prices higher. I always try to buy my interrail tickets during specific periods though, because yeah, in spring they have some um, spring passes and then it's going to be like 20% cheaper or something like that. So I prefer using that. But yeah, my point was that you look for rail tickets and discount cards because it can be useful for last minute trips. So enough about cheap tickets, now you know how to find one. Let's talk about packing, packing essentials, okay? 
One thing I want to tell you is to pack, well, take a luggage that fits and you can carry and, and lift easily. So I used to travel with a backpack, but now I travel with a trolley, like a suitcase on wheels. And I'm really happy with that because it's a very small one. It's um, actually built for airplanes to take on the airplane with you, the carry-ons. Um, and that size is perfect for me because I don't have to carry all the weight on my back because I've got some back issues. And I can still, above my seat, there might be some space to put the luggage so I can put it up or I can put it aside somewhere, slide it under my seat or put it even between my legs if there's no space because it is still a manageable size. So I would say to pack not too big, don't take too big luggages. And then the second thing would be to wear comfortable clothes. Okay, because in the train, maybe it's going to be super hot. Maybe it's going to be cold, depending on what time of the year it is. But I prefer to always have a hoodie. I always wear like my comfortable pants and like good socks that go high because I don't want to have like cold ankles. I don't know what it is with cold ankles, but I don't like it. And so I want to be like fully covered. And then mostly I wear a t-shirt underneath because if I take out my pullover when it's very warm, then I want to like have some fresh air on my arms. So I'm going to wear a t-shirt, okay? So comfortable clothes in general, you define for yourself what is a comfortable, what are comfortable clothes. Okay. Then another thing is toiletries. What I would suggest you is to always take tissues with you when you're traveling by train because maybe you go on a toilet and there's no paper, no toilet paper. Worst feeling ever that those toilets are already not so clean. And imagine you're going to the toilet and there's no toilet paper. You always want to take tissues with you, okay, when you're traveling by train. And another thing for the girlies, <laughs> take some pads with you. You never know what's going to happen, right? So I always have a pad with me as well when I travel by train. Or when I'm just traveling in general, I guess. Another thing is, packing essentials also talks about entertaining and the use of time. Because we're traveling, we have time. We can travel a full day. I have traveled for 12 hours on one day. 8 hours on one day. Sometimes you want to just relax and watch a movie, read a book, do some fun things. Or you want to work. So depending on that, you're going to choose for a quiet zone to sit. I actually always try to sit on the quiet zone. Or if you want to call your friends when you're traveling, then you go to the normal zone where you can just call and do whatever you want. So try to find some entertainment you can do when you're on the road. Because of course, yeah, looking outside the window is going to be beautiful and going to be nice. And I also like to look out of the window. And enjoy the beautiful view. But there is more to do with eight hours, right? So you need to find some entertainment for yourself. Um, and also maybe take a camera with you or make some beautiful pictures with your phone because you will see beautiful sceneries that I can promise. And then last thing to do is bring some documents. So this depends. For example, yeah, you can always print out your ticket. I don't think you need that. But if you have a very bad battery on your phone, then this could be something important to do. And then besides printing out the ticket, you probably also need your identity card to show your age when they're asking. If you have a certain discount, of course, you need to show your discount card or show your age. Um, and then besides that, also if you're not from Europe, I have realized that sometimes in crossing the border, I had it one time in Germany and I had it once in Switzerland, and in Italy, actually, that they were controlling at the border. They were The police was passing by and they were just asking random people for showing their identity card. So I had to show mine. And then there was a guy from the US and he also had to show his documents. And they, the police was being a little bit annoying because, I don't know, his document was like only a paper or something and he didn't have like the normal documents that he needed. So try if... Like in the end, it was okay. It was fine for him. But if you have official documents, 
you should take them with you when you're traveling, definitely when you're not from Europe, because when you cross the border, it might happen that the police hops on and they do some checks. Then I was talking about comfort before. One other thing you can do to have more comfort when you're traveling. So what can you do to be at peak comfort on the train? You book seat reservations, you make use of the bar, you find a quiet carriage, you choose a journey with less connections, or you just upgrade to first class if you want to go crazy. So about the seat reservations, this depends on the railway companies. Some companies don't require you to have a seat reservation. Uh, in some countries, it's even not possible to reserve a seat. For example, in Belgium, I'm from Belgium, and there's no seat reservation to be found. But then when you travel in France, you will get a seat reservation automatically assigned to you because it's within your ticket. And then when you travel in Germany, you can travel without a seat reservation because it's an additional cost. There are seat reservations and I would suggest you to do take a seat reservation depending on, again, what time of the year, what time of the day you're traveling. It could be beneficial to have a seat reservation because otherwise you will be looking for a seat quite a long time. And if you don't speak the German language, then you might have the problem to get into a discussion with a German. Well, we don't want a discussion with a German. We don't want the discussions, no? And also we don't want to not understand what's written on the seats because on the seats there will be written, for example, in Germany, Leipzig, Dresden, which means that the seat is reserved between Leipzig and Dresden. There will be written gegenfalls reserviert, which means maybe reserved. The fuck? Like you don't even know if it's really reserved or not. Like it's probably going to be reserved, but you're not sure. So it's taking a risk sitting on the seat or there's some seats which don't have anything written and those are the jackpots you want to sit there when you don't have a seat reservation but sometimes everybody made a reservation and still you want to hop on the same train because for some reason that is possible then you will have to sit on the ground okay so if you don't want to sit on the ground then i would suggest you to go to the bar or to go to the um, train restaurant and to order some food or drinks and just make use of your time there you will spend a little bit of more money of course but at least you will have a drink in return I guess and then if you book your seat reservations ahead of time I would just say it's more comfortable so never take the train with a big group without a seat reservation okay or even when you're sitting together with your partner you want to sit together people are not gonna shuffle just because you're there with your partner if they have made a seat reservation they're going to be like, I'm sitting here, bro. So make sure to do that reservation. I have witnessed enough discussions to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, and the next thing, yeah, I was talking about quiet car carriage. There's also family carriages. There's also like some places where you can just like talk regularly, I guess. And then those don't have specific names. Some train companies also say that if you want to call, you always have to go outside of the carriage. So you go in the in between parts and then there's, for example, in France, there's like a little place where you can sit and call from that area because you have to be quiet in the carriage anyway. Then, yeah, I was joking about taking the first class upgrade, but of course, if you want the maximalized comfort, you should... Go for a first class ticket because it's almost always quite empty there. And it seems quite comfortable. I've never traveled first class. Deutsche Bahn, please invite me. But I've never done it. And yeah, but sometimes not even so, so much more expensive depending on your budget, right? So uh, when my mom came to visit me, she just paid additionally 30 euros to her ticket. And she thought it was fine. And she traveled first class and she said it was an amazing experience, was just very comfortable. She had a lot of space. She didn't need to make a seat reservation because, well, in first class, there's no need for that because it's never going to be full. Then the last thing I want to say before I'm getting into my personal anecdotes and stories and your questions is that traveling by train is also a sustainable option. <gasps> what? Traveling by train is sustainable? We didn't know. <laughs> Traveling by train is more sustainable than taking the car, than taking an airplane. And 
might not always be cheaper, but definitely be more sustainable. And even now that we learned all of my tricks, we know that traveling by train can be cheaper than traveling by plane. The fuck? We don't need to get on Ryanair. We can just take the next train, right? So lower carbon emissions definitely is a plus for traveling by train. But then another thing is that you feel the way you're traveling. What I really liked, because I have a past where I think it was about five years ago, definitely, where I have traveled a lot by plane. I took the Ryanair, I took Wizz Air quite often because I had a long distance relationship with my boyfriend. And yeah, I just wanted to see him enough and I needed to take the plane for that. Not anymore. But back then, yeah. And even when doing the long distance between Germany and Belgium, I remember one time or twice even I took the plane because it was cheaper. And then I realized all of the tips that I just gave you, that I could use them for me. And I realized it's not going to be cheaper because traveling by plane, you still need to get to the airport. And it's not even going to be shorter because you need to be at the airport ahead of time. And yeah, maybe the plane ticket is only 10 euros, but you need to pay 20 euros to get to the airport and then to come back from the airport to your final destination as well. So it's going to be in the end, the same price and the same distance and length. But then what I was actually saying is that feeling of traveling is also really good because when you're in a plane, actually like the small part in the plane, you're going up, seeing some clouds and you're going down within one hour. Definitely if you're traveling within Europe, you're there so quickly and it's almost a weird feeling to me. And then when you're traveling by train, you have the scene, you look outside, you really feel the travel. Yeah, it's just another feeling and you can enjoy the route and the feeling way better. Another thing which is good for is, of course, local transportation. Uh, We support local transportation by traveling by local train lines. Of course, it's quite logical. And then a last thing which I love about traveling by train is interacting with locals on the train because I love talking. And for some reason, sometimes when you're traveling alone, you don't want to talk with anybody. But on other days, you might want to, yeah, just have a chat. Maybe you're sitting next to a group of women who are talking about their trip and then you hear something and you're interested and you can you can tag along in the conversation or maybe that's just what I do. Or I also had to the experience that, I don't know, my neighbor was asking me uh, something because he didn't have access to the internet on his phone. He was asking me to look up for his train connection. We ended up to have to take the same train and I helped him. And then he talked about his life and his story and what brought him to Germany and stuff like that. And I just think having those conversations make the trip go even faster and you meet people that you would normally never meet and you don't talk to random strangers in the supermarket. Normally, I don't do that actually. But in the train, you're just sitting next to each other. So there's, yeah, the conversation, you you talk a little bit and then you just, if you want to stop the conversation, you, you just work on your computer, you continue your music or whatever you'd want to do. You put on your earphones if you don't want to have a conversation. But if you do want to, A lot of people are open for that and it can be interesting. Okay, so now to get to my personal anecdotes. I was going to talk a little bit more about my delays between Germany and Belgium because I have used the German railway so often and I have had so many delays, but I'm going to spare you all the negative talk about that because in the end, when there's a delay, I always try to think about the positive parts. Because when you have a delay for over an hour, you get some money back. So (laughs) I always try to look at the positive. And if I get 20 euros back on my ticket, then I take the delay with me. It's not a problem. It's going to be fine. And I'm going to arrive at my destination. I always did arrive at my final destination on the same day. So let's talk about my trip from Greece to Germany.
So the favorite journey I want to share with you is actually my trip from Greece to Germany. So that was last summer. My family decided that we are going on holiday in Greece. And I was on the verge of being like, I don't know if I want to travel by plane so much. I don't know about it. And I had time. So I took one plane to go to Greece together with them. But then on the way back, I was like, I'm not going to go back to Belgium with them. I'm going to make the trip a little bit longer. And I want to see if I can travel and go back via different countries to go back to Germany, where I live, by train. So Greece is a peninsula. And because of that, um, yeah, it's going to be a little bit tricky to travel overland. So what I did was I bought an interrail ticket and I learned from the previous experiences with all of the interrail tickets I already had bought in the past and all the mistakes I made. So what I did was buying the interrail tickets and mapping my route and my dates ahead of time. Because interrail sounds flexible, but it ain't. It ain't the way you think it is because you need seat reservations um, in many countries. They're mandatory for interrail people as well. So you have a ticket which you can use to travel in that country, but you don't have a seat in the specific train. So you have to book all of that ahead of time. So my family dropped me off and I had to take the bus. I took a bus that I had to pay separately to go to Patras. I was in Athens. We went to Patras, right? I took the bus there. And then from Patras... I took the overnight ferry to Bari. Bari is in Italy. Patras is still in Greece. And I had to take the ferry because otherwise I had to travel through different countries, through Albania, Serbia, Bosnia, Croatia, Slovenia. And it was going to be very difficult by train to travel through those countries. That's why I had to take the ferry boat to go to Italy because in Italy the train connections are better. I could use my first interrail day to get on the night ferry to Bari. It was very, very interesting, very cool. I made friends on that ship. So a mistake I made when I was on that ferry is that I didn't book a reservation for sleeping carriage. So for some reason, you apparently needed to have like um, a reservation specifically to stay in a certain department of the ferry boat. And I didn't do that because I just bought the cheapest uh, tickets to use the ferry boat. Yeah, I normally had to sleep in the saloon and I was really not comfortable with that. And then in the evening I was waiting till everybody was getting on the ship and I realized that there were some seats still free. So I just hopped on those free seats. I laid myself down. I took use of three seats next to each other in a darker room, which was a sleeping room specifically where... All of the people can sleep in one place. And my friends were like, yeah, we're also sleeping in this room. Don't worry. Um, nobody will wake you up in the night, I guess. It's going to be fine. So for some reason, I dreamt that people were coming to my seat and they were talking about the fact that they were supposed to lay there. But I'm not sure if this is a dream or if this is reality. I hope this was a dream and just me not sleeping very comfortable because I didn't have a seat reservation. So I would suggest you again to do a seat reservation. But yeah, so then I was in Italy. I woke up in Italy. It was so beautiful. You arrived there and I visited the place a little bit. I was two days in Bari. And then I went to Napoli to visit a friend there from Napoli. I went to Milan to visit another friend. And it was just really amazing. I think I've got a benefit that I know many people um, in different countries because I have traveled a lot. So I always try to yeah, take contact with those friends will live abroad because then of course cheaper accommodation right in Bari I didn't know anybody so I slept in an, um, an Airbnb no not even an Airbnb what am I saying it was a hostel and not a good one and then from Milano so I went from Milano which is still Italy I went to Munich Munich was is in Germany because I went to Oktoberfest straight from summer holidays 
to beer festival and it was amazing so that was a full journey of four days on interrail and I arrived in München I had so many things in my bag because in Milano my friend was telling me oh there's so much good food so much Italian food you need to take with you and then we went to store which is called Eat Italy Italy so it's like Italy written with eat in front so it's Italy and we had like she showed me the best pasta and the best pesto and the olives I needed to buy and I don't know I was taking risotto with me I was taking so much food with me I don't even <sighs> I was she really convinced me because she was so in love with her Italian food you know Italians how they are about their food and I bought like my bag was already too heavy and then I arrived in München and with all of this food and stuff and I even needed to take from München I needed to take everything with me to Leipzig where I live but luckily we were traveling by car for that part so I was finally going home with the family of my boyfriend by car because we were all together in one car which was very easy and more practical or what am I even saying that's not even true we didn't take the car back home we didn't fit in the car anymore. We did take the train. We did take the train. Yes. And it was heavy. Never mind. Anyway, so that was my trip. I really would do it again. And I want to do more interrail trips in the future because it was so amazing. And if you have the time, you should definitely look into that. Now let's start with the questions of the week. I have received a lot of questions about traveling by train and I'm going to go through them. The questions I received were all written to me via Instagram. So if you ever want to reach out to me, if you have questions about traveling or about learning languages, because I also know five languages, then you can always write to me through Instagram, right? Okay. But so let's get into the questions of the week. The first question was, what was the cheapest journey you ever did? What was the cheapest journey you ever did? 17 euros from Leipzig, Germany to Brussels, Belgium. That was that was really like the first time I saw that I was like, what? But then the cheapest ticket I ever saw and I didn't use was 15 euros, which was even cheaper, right? But I never I didn't use the ticket because it was like a train that was going to take you all night between also Germany and Belgium, but you would stay like in Frankfurt station for four hours in the eve- in the night. And I didn't want to do that. Okay. Next question. Name all the countries you traveled through. I don't know if I can name all of them. Like traveled through by, by train, I could say. I traveled in the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany, France, Switzerland, Italy, Slovenia, Austria, Czech Republic, and then Greece, of course, Spain, um, England, and Poland. Yeah, that's it. But quite some, quite some countries, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, next question. What is your favorite place you have traveled to by train? My favorite place I have traveled to? I must say Slovenia, actually, to be honest, because the thing is my boyfriend did an Erasmus in Slovenia and that's the time where I took the plane uh, quite often between Belgium and Slovenia because it's quite a far distance for a long distance relationship. But now that we live in Germany, in Leipzig, we are closer to Slovenia and this summer we went to Slovenia by train And it was actually really, really easy and fun. And Slovenia is a beautiful country. I I really, really, really enjoy the people there, the energy, the climate. Yeah, the horses. (laughs) We went to some horse place there with the Lipizzana. And they were so beautiful. (laughs) So I I really like Slovenia. Yeah, gonna say Slovenia at the moment. My favorite place I traveled to by train was Slovenia. Because for me, it was not a place where you could travel to by train. And then the other place, of course, was Greece, because I never thought about traveling by train to Greece either. Next question. Do you think French people are mean? 
Could it be just our customer service ethics? Haha. <laughs> um, do you think French people are mean? I don't think French people are mean on the train. I always have had good experiences. I mean, yes, of course, maybe it's more difficult for foreign people when they don't know their language and a lot of French people only speak French. But my mother tongue is French. So for me, actually, I have had good experiences. And I don't understand the people who say that French people are mean because I guess the, it's really a communication problem more than a problem of the French people being mean, in my opinion. But yeah, the customer service ethics, even there, I must say, like, I have had good experiences. I traveled quite some time between Belgium and France, and I have never had a problem. I never had, like, a rude person in the, like, controlling my ticket. I mean, maybe I was just, like, always, I always was sitting on the right place in the train. I never had, a, like, a like an issue, never saw somebody somebody else facing big difficulties. But I'm interested in your story, though. Did, do you have like I'm gonna I'm gonna ask this person who wrote us in because I want to know their story about their like maybe they had like a bad experience with the customer service ec service ethics. And if you back home listening to this right now have had bad experience with French people by when you're traveling by train or in general, please DM me, please send me a message on Instagram because I want to know why. It's, is it because of the language or is it just people being mean? I don't know. I don't think French people are mean, though. Um, and I'm not from Bel from France, so I'm not defending my country. I'm just I'm just saying from my experience. Okay, next question: Why is there always an annoying construction project? <laughs> Why is there always some annoying construction project at West Germany train stops? I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> it's in the whole Germany, baby. You will find train delays all over Germany. There's gonna be construction workers. There's gonna be like delays because of people on the tracks. They say sometimes there's police controls. I have seen so many, many different reasons why the train has a delay. But yes, constructions are a thing. There's a lot of construction projects. I guess. It's on the long term a good thing. They are repairing the tracks, I guess. Um, but the problem is also that the system is a little bit older, I think. And another thing is that, for example, when you compare Germany to France. In France, when you're traveling through France, you will have very long distances. You travel through different cities and there's no stop. As soon as you get through Germany, there will never be such a long distance, such a high speed, because a lot of people, when you're like a lot of cities, when they're like, oh, you're traveling through my city, I want to stop in my city. So you need to stop in a way more places when you're traveling in Germany, just because of, I guess, politics, because when they were making the tracks, they were passing through certain cities and the city said like, okay, you can pass through our place, but we want to at least have a stop here as well. So the train will not go as fast. So that's also why long distance trains will use the same tracks as the tracks which are for short distance trains, right? For more regional trains sometimes even. So yeah, the tracks are used more frequently. There's no extra tracks for the very quick trains. So you will face a lot of like... Delays due to construction projects, that is true. But also sometimes construction on the train or police controls or whatever. There's so many different reasons for delay. I don't know, like medical or emergency on the train, stuff like that. It's, it's ter terrible, but it always happens. And the problem is that I guess there's not enough tracks. So the trains just have to stop because if one track is blocked, then everything, yeah, is fucked. <laughs> Next question. What is the difference between Interrail and Eurorail? Okay, so it's basically the same thing. It's the same company. I always say Interrail because I'm from Europe. And so the tickets you buy is also the same. So you buy an Interrail ticket if you're from Europe. And you buy a Eurorail ticket if you're from outside of Europe. So a Eurorail ticket is actually for the people outside of Europe who want to travel by train through Europe. And the Interrail ticket 
is it tickets you buy when you're from Europe and you want to travel within Europe? I hope that clears up the air. Next question. What food to bring on a long trip? Okay, I didn't talk about the food actually, to be honest, before. So I'm gonna quickly address the food as well, because you can like eat aboard of the train or you can eat in the train station. But what I like to do is to always make sure that I've got some snack with me. I try to take some fruit, like an apple or something, because that's an easy snack that doesn't smush. Like, I don't know, I would never take a banana because I would it would just smush in my backpack, I guess. So take an apple with you and then I would also take some like pasta salad or maybe make a sandwich at home you know so you have some food if there's ever delay or for some reason at the restaurant they're out of food has happened before then you have food with you you know you don't need to rely on others and you're just sure so which food to bring on the long trip I would say take an apple with you take enough water with you and take a lunch package a sandwich, a salad, whatever you want. But if you take a salad, I'm sorry, just wanted to add that. If you take a pasta salad, make sure you don't put too much oil in it because if you put oil and then you even you close it very well, when you open it up, it might be a little bit oily and that's that can be annoying. I have had the experience as well. And then you need to clean it up again and ugh, it's gonna be a bit more annoying so try to avoid oily stuff and also try to avoid stinky stuff please do not be the one with your wurst next to me on the train okay <laughs> that's terrible there's people in Belgium there's like this thing called wurstenbrot I'm gonna look if there's this thing also in, in, in English it's called sausage bread okay do not not even think about bringing sausage bread on the train it stinks it sucks for vegetarian people but it stinks okay don't take smelly things don't eat an egg on the train don't eat stinky stuff on the train okay please 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 don't do that okay yeah uh next question where can you eat on the train okay so i have actually replied to that already so you can eat at your seat definitely you can eat at a restaurant you can also eat in the train stations and then the last question from the Q&A is where do you sleep when you do long trips good question of course well when you're taking a night train I did that once you're sleeping on a train you're sleeping on your seat or in your cabin depending on what you booked and when you're doing just long trips and you're yeah, early in the morning or late in the evening, you're gonna be like mindful of each other. Most of the people are gonna be a little bit more quiet on the train because it's early and nobody's gonna be like crazy loud in general. You can also make sure that you go again to the quiet zones of the train if you're if that's possible. Maybe move the seat a little bit to to lay down a little bit more, depending on what kind of train you are on. You maybe want to choose a window seat so that you can put your head against the window. Or even close the like the window sheet so that it's a little bit darker. What I would always recommend you is to take. Um, so I forgot to say that in my essentials, but you always need to take a sleep mask with you when you're traveling by train because, yeah. And if you don't have a sleep mask, you just take your scarf, you put on your hoodie, the front to the back or whatever. You put your jacket on your face or something so that it's darker. All right, that were the questions of the week. Thank you so much for all of these questions and thank you for listening to this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something and I hope you now know that you can travel by train and without it being crazy expensive or crazy difficult. I gave you all of the hacks you need to know to travel by train, okay? But if you have more questions, you can always DM me on Instagram. Yeah, and if you have ideas for future episodes or questions, yeah, make sure to write them there as well. This was Travel Devil, brought to you by me, your host, Clara Franken. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to continue the conversation or suggest any future guests, you can go to my Instagram, at Clara Franken. Take care, and I will see you next Thursday.